morning. Here we are another Wednesday. And today is June the 14th, 2023. And I want to say good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome to today's Bible study message. We're going to be talking about staying on the right road when everything is going wrong. Staying on the right road when everything is going wrong. I'm Isaac White here, Jr. And I have the privilege of serving as the senior pastor of uh, First Baptist Church, Gainesville, Georgia. We're located at 1810 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Gainesville, Georgia, 30501. Amen. We thank and praise God. And of course, uh, today, I'm wearing my T-shirt again. We just celebrated, and I did bring it home and washed it, but I'm wearing it again today, where we celebrated Youth Day this past Sunday. Man, what a time we had. And help me to thank uh, First Baptist Church, our youth minister, uh, Reverend uh, Melody Hopkins, and the entire committee, and all of our young people, our parents, and the guardians of our young people. Y'all did a terrific job. Everything went so well, and I was so well pleased that Reverend Hopkins brought a great word. You know, our theme was, we belong to him. See the be there? We <laughs> belong to him. And again, what a blessing it was. And let me tell you something, my friend. You're always welcome to join us at First Baptist Church. I thank you for tuning in, but I'd love to see you in person. Stop by and visit with us and share with us in our morning worship. Each Sunday morning, we have Sunday school at 9 o'clock, worship at 945, and every person at First Baptist Church is a VIP. Every person is a very important person person. Amen. No big eyes, no little U's. Amen. God bless us all. What a blessing it is. We thank the Lord for it. Amen. So again, come join us if you like. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapters number 37 through 50, and that's what I've asked us to study and meditate on, read throughout those chapters if you don't mind, because again, as we go through these next couple of messages, I'll primarily be just telling the story. Okay, so I'm trusting that you are reading and studying your Bible, in particular Genesis chapters, uh, chapters number 37 through 50. And basically, uh, those chapters encompass or entail the life and times of Joseph. Uh, these chapters highlight the life of Joseph, and that's what I want us to uh, 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 tune into and learn from Joseph's life as we talk about this turning point where we get to that place in life where we want to make a turn for the better. We want to make a turn where we can uh, uh, turn over a new leaf, so to speak, where we can allow God to use us that we might be better people, that we might serve God better, that we might love better and love more, that we might achieve better and achieve more, that we might accomplish better and accomplish more. Amen. Sign me up for that. I'm all in for that. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about this turning point. Then we went through our series. We talked about the importance of being spiritually connected with God and uh, how we are to change spiritually for the better. And then we talked about teaching and training, knowledge, getting that knowledge, receiving that knowledge. And the fact that without knowledge, God's people, we are being destroyed for lack of knowledge, either for lack of not getting, not gaining, not having, or ignoring the knowledge that God gives us. So God says we're being uh, destroyed uh, because of a lack of uh, knowledge. And then we talked about with that knowledge, where are we to go? We are to go through a transformation period where we allow God through his word, by his spirit, to change us. Amen. All the learning in the world is no good if, if it doesn't change us. Are you hearing me? As we become closer to God, spiritually connected to God, we cannot help but change, but we have to take a, a, uh, a deliberate step towards change. We want God to take us through that transformation where he changes our lives. Amen? Where we are indeed walking like godly people, living like godly people, and loving like godly people. So with that teaching, training, with that knowledge, with that transformation, then what do we expect? Then we expect the transition. Transition simply means I'm moving from one place or the journey from one place to another. 
And we talk about it like this. We say that uh, we want to go to the next level. We want to go to another level. We want to move beyond where we are. Anybody besides me out there, I want to move beyond where I am to where God wants me to be. Amen? I want to go through that period of transition. Amen. So we're going to be talking about that. And of course, we'll continue on Wednesdays. I did not preach last Sunday and I will not be preaching this Sunday, which, by the way, it's Father's Day. And my daughter decided to come down, Dr. Cynthia Jackson, and spend Father's Day with me. So I told her, well, since you're coming, prepare a word and come and preach for us. Amen. So I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. So uh, this week, Wednesday, and probably the next time, next lesson will be on a Wednesday. But today, I want to talk about, again, about staying on the right road when everything, when everything is going wrong. How do we stay on the, the right road? Amen. And, uh, and I know that sometimes we use these, uh, and I do, use these, uh, what I call extreme uh, generalities, where we speak in general terms and, and we speak in extreme terms, like uh, everything, everybody they all did, and they all did this. They all did that. And we talk about these things, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and of course, we've got to realize that uh, uh, it's really not that bad, you know. But there's a reason why I'm making that point in that way today. Okay, so there's a, a reason for it. Uh, amen. So I hope that you have gained something from our previous lessons and that you are ready to make that turn in your life and that you are indeed receiving the word of God, the knowledge of God, and beginning to understand God in bigger and better ways. And I do hope, my friend, that you are growing in the process. Amen. That you are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are being transformed. God is changing us. Amen. But we also talked about how uh, certain things can prevent us from growing. Certain things can prevent us from uh, not only from going through that transformation, but also can prevent us from going through that uh, season of transition. And I believe we talked about that last week. I won't go over that entire lesson, but we talked about how our past is really the foundation for our future. You know, I, I realize that, you know, oftentimes we talk about the past, we condemn the past and, and all of that, but God showed me how valuable our past is. No matter what happened, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it was, it is still good for us. He is working all things together for our good. Hallelujah be to God. Amen. Amen. So our past serves as that foundation upon which we build the rest of our lives. And I just recently realized that. What a blessing that is. It is how we use it, how we see it, how we allow it to affect us. And that's what I, what did I talk about last week? Uh, uh, how, what is your past doing for you or something like that? Um, so it's how we allow our past to affect uh, our now as well as our future. Okay, so again, as we talk about today, I want to learn, I want to know, I need to know, how do I stay on the right road when everything is going wrong? Okay, and again, we know it's not everything, but there's so much of it that we can call it everything. <laughs> Amen. We realize it is not everything. We thank God that it's not everything. Because in the midst of all of that, you know, I talk about this in one of my points a little bit later, but in the midst of all of that, God is still blessing. In the midst of so much and so many things and so many people doing wrong and so many things going wrong, God is still blessing us. Amen. You know, if anyone has ever felt like everything is going wrong, Joseph has to be considered, you know, one, one in the front line, right? Right up near the front. He got, he's got to be right near the top because Joseph had to feel sometimes like everything was going wrong. Like he couldn't do anything right. Like everything was going wrong. I mean, he had so much going wrong in his life, so much going on, but so much going wrong as well in his life. And listen, I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. And I have no doubts that God is able. But let me tell you something, my friend. I can say to you with a high degree of certainty 
that living the Christian life and living life, period, is an uphill battle. It's challenging just to wake up, just to get out of the bed, just to step out in life and do the normal, usual things in life without some challenge to our existence and without some challenge to our efforts. Listen, and when so many things are going wrong with our lives and with, listen, it becomes an even more difficult challenge to navigate through life. How do you do right when so many people are doing wrong and doing you wrong? How do we stay on the right road when so many things are going wrong? Come on in and let's talk about it. And let's see if we can figure this thing out. Hallelujah. Come on in here. Amen. You know, in order for us to transition to the next level, we will have to go through some things. We will have to uh, be able to endure some things. We've got to have that uh, resilience about us that whatever happens to us, we are going to bounce back and we are going to keep it moving. I mean, there's a certain expectation. And I think it's a fair expectation. It's not real, but I think it's fair. <laughs> it's, it's not reality. It's not life. But there's a certain expectation on our part that says if we live right, then things will go right. There's that expectation that if we live right, things will go right. That if we do right by others, then others will do right by us. That, that's, I call, that's what I call a fair expectation. It is just not reality. It is not life. We think that, you know, that if we do the right thing by everybody, everybody's going to do the right thing about us. But that doesn't always work. Life doesn't always work that way. And I know that sometimes it seems, uh, you know, just the opposite because we experience those bad things, those wrong things in our lives. And just what we were expecting, we get the opposite of what we thought it would be. The more right we do, it seems like the more uh, wrong is done to us. And the more we try to walk uprightly, it seems like the more we get knocked down and stepped on in life. I'm telling you, there's a great expectation on our part, but it does not always work out the way that we think it ought to work out. It ought to work out. Amen? Because sometimes it goes in just the opposite direction. Joseph's life was one of, listen, was indeed one of ups and downs. It was a life of, uh, of doing right, but often being done wrong. It was one of uh, giving his best, but reaping the worst that life had to offer. Listen, my friend, his life was one of uh, uh, always seeking the best for everybody, but sometimes receiving the worst from everybody. And I'm learning a valuable lesson from Joseph. I'm learning a valuable lesson from his life. I am learning that we can stay on the right road even when everything, or seemingly everything, is going wrong. I look at Joseph. I look at his life. He never stopped. Uh, uh, he never stopped living for God. He never stooped to the level of evil that other people were doing. He never lowered himself to their standards. He never did that. He never sought revenge. Listen, he never repaid evil for evil. And in spite of so many things going wrong, he somehow stayed on the right road. And as long as we stay on the right road, listen, my friend, promotion, elevation, and going to the next level, it'll come. Okay? And when looking at the life of Joseph, we have to be amazed and ask ourselves, how did he do it? How did he do it? I mean, he had every right to strike back. He had every right to defend himself and to avenge himself. He had every right, but he stayed on the right road. And he kept loving, kept serving, kept trusting in the Lord. Amen? I mean, yeah, he got off to a rocky start. You know, he was misunderstood by his parents. He was hated by his brothers. He got off. He got off to a, a bad start. Amen. And we wonder sometimes, what makes people so mean? I do. I wonder, what, what makes people like that? What makes them do the things that they do and behave in the way that they behave? What makes people treat us the way that they do? What is it about them? And sometimes we look at all that they do, and then we want to put the blame on ourselves. We, want to, we even allow that guilt to creep in on us. 
thinking that we are the culprits, thinking that we are the cause, thinking that we did it. But please hear me, my friend. Don't blame yourself and don't beat yourself up. It is likely something that was there all along and it just took something or someone to trigger it and to make it show up, to make it or to release it. Okay? It is not you. It is not me. They would have us to believe that it's us, but it is not us. And sometimes we take on that guilt and we don't realize. We think, well, it was I did this. It was I did that. You know, we deal with that with church folk all the time. Because people are always trying to make the pastor, the leaders of the church, make, always want to try to make you feel guilty. Like everything is your fault. And listen, my friend, and I hear people uh, way more often than I care to hear them, but I hear people talk about how they behave the way they do because of people, because of other people, because they did this to me. They said that about me. And always blame everybody else for their failures in life. Always blaming somebody else for their behavior. Whatever it is that's in you was already there. Some kind of way it came out, it worked its way out, but we did not cause that you are the cause of it. Whatever it is, it's you. It's not us. Hallelujah be to God. And I'm sick and tired of people blaming everybody else and everything else for their failures in life. It is time for us. Can I go back another week or so? It is time for us to grow up, to grow up and take responsibility for our own actions and take responsibility for our own lives. Amen. Amen. Because listen, my friend, it's not you. It's them. Again, they want us to believe it's us. But it's not us. It is them. Amen. So don't take on their blame. Don't take on their guilt. You know, I don't know about you, but I have plenty of things to be found guilty of of my own. And I ain't about to. I certainly don't want to take on anybody else's guilt. I got enough of my own. Are you hearing me? Amen. And I'm not going to voluntarily take on your guilt and carry your guilt and sorrows around with me. Ain't going to happen. Okay? So when we look at Joseph, listen, his father expresses his appreciation for a son in his old age. Who wouldn't be glad? Man, you know, whatever his age was at the time, the old man going to always be proud that he has a son. You know, just... Oh, man, I got a son in my old age, man. What a, what a blessing. And yeah, you know, the father... You know, probably gave Joseph a little bit more attention than he gave the rest of them, but that's okay. Made the boy a coat of many colors, and then, you know, his uh, brothers began to hate him. Let me tell you something, what I just got to explain it to you. The coat did not make them hate. That coat of many colors may have triggered it, what was already there, may have released what was already there, but it did not cause what was already there. They were already hateful men. It was already in them. Are you hearing me? So Joseph has no reason to feel bad uh, that his father gave him a coat of many colors. Enjoy it, man. Wear it. Enjoy it. But the brothers hated him. And then when God spoke to him in a dream, he shares his dream with his brothers, thinking that they would be proud of him, that they would... Um, just uh, back him and support him that God is about to use him in an awesome way. But the Bible says they hated him even more. They hated him. And even when he told his parents about his dream, because the, the, uh, the dream involved his parents, and they thought, listen, they thought the worst of the situation, but God intended the best for the situation. God was really looking out for them. Amen. And so the father expresses his love, gives him a coat of many colors. Amen. And uh, 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 when we look at how his brothers responded, how they reacted, they hated him. They mistreated him. Instead of them, listen now, watch this now. Instead of them searching for ways, listen, to rid themselves of their hate, they searched for ways to rid themselves of their brother. They would rather get rid of the brother than get rid of the hate. And that's where we are in today's society. As a society, that's where we are today. Listen, that's what we're up against. We'd rather keep the hatred, keep the dishonesty, keep the, in the injustices, keep the division, keep the corruption, and keep the discrimination 
and get rid of the people. We need to learn how to love. We need to learn how to love people. Not just get rid of them. Not get rid of the people that we hate, but learn how to love them. Get rid of the hate. No deep, we look at it like there's no need to change our evil ways. Just get rid of those against whom we are evil. It's their fault. Get rid of them and we'll stop being evil. No. We look at people and we look at how our society is distorted and how it is deceptive. And the reasoning behind it all is that, well, if it were not for them, if it were not for those blacks, were not for those people of color, if it were not for them, we would have no racism. We have racism only because of them. It's their fault. If it were not for these people, we would have no crime in our communities. It's their fault. And watch their reasoning. Watch their rationale. If the Justice Department, if the district attorneys were not investigating us, we wouldn't be facing any charges. No kidding. And if a certain portion of our population would just do as they are told, go where they are sent, and listen, behave as we tell them, we wouldn't have all this chaos and confusion. They would be saying, no need to take away our guns, just take away the people we are inclined to shoot. Move the problem out of the way. This society says it's all their fault. If it were not for them, we wouldn't have to hate as we do. And looking again at the life of Joseph, listen, unlike many of us, Joseph didn't take to the soapbox. He didn't seek to make a political statement or stand for any cause other than for God. He didn't resort to evil. He did not resort to violence or hate. Listen, we don't hear him complaining. We don't hear him blaming other people. We don't see Joseph crying and whining about every little thing that has happened to him in his life. He just kept using everything that life threw his way as stepping stones. If only I could be that disciplined and that focused <laughs> and that restrained. Help me, Joseph. Lord, help me here. Joseph struggled. Listen, Joseph struggled throughout his life. Joseph, he had struggles, he had sorrows. He was walked on, he was mistreated, but he maintained his status as a man of God and as a man of integrity. It seems that when the world needed someone to kick around, Joseph was their man. But at every opportunity to do some good and at every opportunity to help someone else, Joseph was the man. Hated by his brothers, misunderstood by his parents. He was threatened with death, but then his life was spared only to be thrown into a pit. He rises. Somebody say he rises. He rises and is then sold into slavery. Again, he rises only to become a servant, a slave to part of his kingdom. He then rises again to become the trusted overseer of part of his household. Then, of course, you know the story if you were reading it, if you read it, you know the story. Falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, he is then thrown into the dungeon, into jail. But we know he will rise again. In all of this, Joseph continued to be patient. He continued to be faithful, continued to give the best of his service to the Lord and to humanity. But how was he able to do it? How could he continue to take the abuse and continue to be a blessing? How was he able to stay on the right road, although everything was going wrong? How was he able to stick with his convictions, to stick with his objective in life? How was he able to do that? You know, his objective was to be his best, to live his best, to give of his best. And the Bible gives us the primary answer as well as the correct answer. Listen, the Bible tells us all about Joseph and what he was willing to do in spite of what was going wrong in his life. Amen be to God. 
And we need that, my friend, because we're challenged by the bad things, by the wrong things that are done against us, that are done to us. Amen. And thank God that the Word of God gives us the answer. And the Word of God tells us, listen, my friends, the Word of God tells us that Joseph was able to endure. He was able to rise again. He was able to make it for one simple reason, and that is because God was with him. God was with him. Hallelujah be to God. God was with him. Out of all of that, God was with him. He, number one, because God was with him. That's the answer. That's it. He was able to stay on the right road, even though there were so many wrong things happening to his life and in his life. But he was able to come out smelling like a rose because the Lord was with him. And even his enemies, even the king, even others, they recognized that, oh yeah, God is with him. Isn't that something, my friend, that the people around you, they recognize that God is with you. They're not always talking about you and all that you are doing and all that you are, but they're talking about how God is working in your life and how God keeps on picking you up every time they knock you down. They knew that it was God that was with him. Joseph knew that it was God that was with him. That's why he kept getting up. That's why he kept on going. That's why he continued. That's why he kept loving. That's why he kept living, because he understood that God was with him. Amen. He understood that God was with him. And then, uh, you know, I mentioned it already, but let me say again. Secondly, he understood his objective. He understood his goal in life. His goal was very simply to be the best, to live the best, to give the best. That, that was his goal. That, that was his ambition in life. I just want to be my best. I just want to give my best. I just want to have the best that life has to offer. And I want to give what I have, give the best that I have to offer to life. He understood that. That's why he was able to continue. That's why he was able to stand up and get up even after being knocked down. Are you hearing me? Thirdly, listen to me, my friend, because we're trying to learn how to keep on the right road, how to stay on the right road when everything is going wrong. Thirdly, he understood that the road to the top may be littered with some down experiences. I say it again. I say he recognized, he realized that the road to the top is likely to be littered with some down experiences. Don't panic. Don't fret. Amen. Your season is coming. Even though you may be down right now, keep looking up. Let me tell you something, my friend. You may have been pushed to the back. You may have been stepped on, but keep on. Keep looking up. Keep getting up. And God will keep on picking you up. He'll keep lifting you up. Glory be to God. That's how you stay on the right road, my friend. You got to understand that the, the devil is not going to give you a free pass. He's not going to step back and let you go by unhindered, unmolested. He is not going to do it. So you might as well get ready. The road to the top is littered with some bad experiences, some down experiences, some wrong experiences. Amen. Amen. Then fourthly, and you got to think about seven things I want to share with you. Then fourthly, in, in spite of, listen, and I mentioned this earlier, in spite of his troubles and in spite of his burdens, in spite of all that, Joseph never discounted or overlooked the blessings of the Lord. Amen. He never overlooked the fact that even in the midst of being in a pit, in a dungeon, in a jail, God was still blessing him. In the midst of those who were trying to kill him and destroy him, God was still blessing him. There was no complaining on his part. Listen, he was not complaining. He was just saying, thank you, Lord. No criticizing, no blaming, no griping, no whining, no crying, no excuses. Just thank you, Lord, for my journey. Amen? Then fifthly, listen, this is how he was able to stand. This is how he was able to get back up. He understood that he controlled the end. Now, I know what we say sometimes. We say it's not over till he says so. We're speaking of God. It's not over till God says it's over, and that's true. But let me tell you all this also that you may not know, may not understand. It's not over till you say it's over. It's not the end until you declare it's the end. And that's what so many of us are doing. That's what we're doing wrong. We are declaring that it's over 
and it doesn't have to be over. We are declaring the end when it doesn't have to be the end. And so many of you are giving up, you're quitting, you're throwing in the towel because you have declared that this is the end. This is the end. I'm not going to get any better. I'm not going any further. The devil is a liar. Joseph understood that he is the one who controlled the end. Amen. Then six, number six. He understood that to reach the next level. Hear me now. He understood that to reach the next level, it could require that we be a blessing. Don't miss this one. Be a blessing to our abusers, our enemies, our misuser, and we are to be a blessing for no other reason than it's the right thing to do. Are you hearing me? We are to do it expecting nothing in return. We are to do it not blackmailing anybody, not bribing anybody. We do it just for the love of the Lord. Joseph understood that the very people who mistreated me, the very ones that tried to kill me, the very ones that tried to destroy me, if I'm going to be elevated and if I'm going to the next level, I've got to learn how to bless them. The Bible teaches us bless and not curse. Amen. I know what we want to do. We want to curse them. We want life to be miserable for them. But God will use you, my friend. I'm talking about if you, go, you, if you desire to be elevated, God is going to use you. He wants to use you to be a blessing to even those that hated you. And that's for his glory. That's for his good. That's a way of you showing and demonstrating the love of God. Then seventh and lastly, Joseph understood. Hear this now because we talk a lot about destiny. Reaching our destiny. That's my destiny. And we talk about a, you know, a, lot, of, a lot about destiny. But Joseph understood something about destiny that most of us have missed in life. He understood that, listen to me, that the problem with destiny is that nobody knows which direction destiny will take. <laughs> we don't know what we will have to go through to get to our destiny. God did not give us a road map with every crook, turn, stop, or stall. There's no GPS that can tell us the way we've got to go. There's no map that can prepare us for the journey other than the Word of God. But destiny, we don't know the direction that we'll have to go in order to reach our destiny. David eventually became king, but did you find, did you figure out what he had to go through before he got there? That was his destiny. But his destiny took all kinds of twists and turns in different directions to get to his destiny. So don't you give up. Don't give up. Just because you may be at a hard place in your life or a bad place in your life, don't give up, my friend. We can stay on the right road, even though it seems like Everything is going wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Continue to speak to us that we might continue to walk the right road. Even though so much and so many things are going wrong in our lives. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Well, my friend, always a blessing to be here with you, and I trust that it has been a blessing to you. I want you to get out of here. Don't forget, Sunday is Father's Day. Come on, y'all. Help us out here now. Y'all, we always do wonderful things for our mothers. How about looking out for the brothers, too, okay? Amen. And I look forward to you seeing you on Sunday morning. Come on out and worship with us. Worship begins at 945. Sunday school begins at uh, 9 o'clock. So come on out and share with us, and I look forward to seeing you. Don't forget, study that word, okay? The word works. In particular, 
get to the book of Genesis chapters 37 through 50 so that you can relate to what I'm talking about when I see you again on next Wednesday. Get out of here and enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you next time. God bless you. We'll talk to you.